Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm James and today we're going to talk about intercalation. So that's a year where you do something else other than medicine within your five years to make it a six year program. And I managed to intercalate from Liverpool University to Cambridge University. Now just to talk a little bit about the stage that I'm at. So I've just finished my Liverpool end of year exams. So I've now finished third year. And if I didn't intercalate, so in Liverpool, it's an option at some universities it's compulsory. So Liverpool, you can opt into doing an intercalation. Uh, and then uh, I would actually go on to fourth year and then fifth year, but I'm basically slotting a year in between uh, to make it a six year programme. So what will I be doing in my intercalation? Well, I'm doing an MPhil, which is a Masters of Philosophy, and that will be within stem cells and how to repair uh, chronic wounds and that couldn't be after surgery because it's within the Department of Surgery. Now the Stem Cell Institute is within Cambridge University within the Addenbrooke's Hospital site uh, so I'll be doing that uh, throughout the year project and the lab work will be the main focus so I'll be learning new lab skills using things like flow cytometry and all the things uh, that you can maybe learn for A-level biology or something like that. Uh, I will be kind of using that and creating my own data and it hasn't really been done much before so it'll be very kind of new uh, research which is really exciting uh, and then I'll be re writing that up and then I present that in a kind of they call it a viva um, but that's a kind of a spoke you have to present your work to professionals and other people so that's what I'm doing I'll be accepted to Wolfson College which is one of the 31 colleges in Cambridge and I didn't actually apply for this college uh, but I'll go into a little bit more detail about the college choices if you fancy applying to Oxbridge as well um, so yeah, I'm in Wolfson, it's a postgraduate college and a mature student college. Now, this is probably the bit where you're going to be tuning in for, so this is how I actually ended up doing this and how I got accepted and the process. Now you'll see online everywhere, uh, I'll kind of show you some links, that if you go on Student Room, if you go on just a quick Google search, you say, can you apply to Cambridge or Oxford to do your intercalation? The majority of people on there will say, no, you can't. Um, and that's what I initially thought when I was kind of coming into medical school. However, uh, at my medical school, there was a few people who did manage to and it, it came up. So I thought, well, how do I actually get, end up doing that? Now, it's not a typical intercalation, as it were, uh, that you can choose anything. So in Cambridge and Oxford, you can choose kind of a majority of lo lots of the different random things and a BSc, essentially. However, with a intercalation, you have to do a master's. And there's two different types of intercalation that you can do. You can do a MPhil, uh, so a master's of, usually a master's of research. So you base your year in a research project, or you can do a just a straight MSc, so just a master's program. Uh, so that can be things from pharmacology to uh, global health, so things like that. And that's a very much taught system. So you have two different types. You can have research or taught. Now, in terms of how you go about doing this, so you go online and have a look on the websites and see which ones you uh, like the look of. And you have to make sure they're a year along because an intercalation is just one year. I would always advise emailing the, the person in charge of that department as soon as you think that you might be interested. There's no point filling out an application form and you weren't even eligible in the, in the first place. So definitely email, that's what I did, email all the different ones that you might be interested in. Double check that they can check, they, they can do intercalation to students if they can't, they'll tell you and it saves you uh, applying to something that you weren't ever going to get into anyway. So yeah, find the one. When you found one, so the one that I found was uh, MPhil in medical science in brackets surgery. So when I found that, it said on one of the things you have to, the list of things that you need, so things like a personal statement, a CV, the medical CV, and you also need a supervisor. Now this is where it gets a bit more complicated. You have to go onto the website and find the list of supervisors that can do potential projects for you. You have to go down that list and see which department takes your fancy. So for me, I'm interested in surgery, so I went to look for all the different surgical options that there were available. Um, so all you do, all you get given is an email address of that department, uh, so the head of the department from there, and then you email them and say, oh, would you be uh, would you be keen in having me for a year with my intercalation, blah, blah, blah. And then at that point, I would advise emailing as many as you can. Don't just email one because they might not get back to you and it, you kind of lose a chance of going with someone else. Get there early, email about, I think I emailed about 10. 
you can email as many as many as you like. Now, let's say you get a reply from one of the supervisors um, with me. Be careful here because mine says, I said, can we kind of set up a Zoom call just to kind of talk through some projects that might be available. To this supervisor, that meant an interview. <laughs> so I was just going to talk through some projects, see what they had going for them and see if I actually wanted to carry on with this team. However, that was an interview for them. So they were asking me questions like, oh, so why do you want to come to Cambridge? Why don't you just stay at Liverpool? Uh, what draws you here? What projects did you want? What about funding? And it was very intense for the first meeting. Uh, I then had about five different meetings after that and realised that it's a bit more serious. Therefore, if you, if you get to that stage and finding a supervisor and emailing them, make sure you're on point and know exactly what you know and research everything about the course and the projects beforehand so you know you look like you know what you're talking about. Let's say you've gone through all of those and they've said, okay, you can apply. You then need a research proposal. So they want you to uh, apply for the course with a, oh, I want to do this research project. Um, the supervisors will probably help you with that. And that's what my one did. I had to do all the uh, introduction to that. So I, I had to kind of do an introduction with references and things like that. Basically fill out all the application forms and then submit an application. When you submit an application, it takes a very, very, very long time for anything to happen. So there's no harm in just keep pestering either supervisors or the university department just so you know what's going on because the website is very confusing about what you actually have to do next and there's lots of waiting around. So funding, I think it's important to mention this because one of the parts they asked me in the interview was have you looked into any funding? If you haven't, it doesn't matter, but when you get your research proposal, definitely start looking at funding because the earlier you look at it, the more likely you'll go, the, more, the increased chance of you actually getting the funding. If, even if you don't need funding for the year, it looks good on a CV or whatever you have. So definitely try and get funding from some, some uh, option. Also, your application looks a bit stronger as well. If you have a funding already secured, they're more likely to have you on as well because they don't have to worry about the finances kind of stuff, side of things. Okay, so just mentioned about the colleges. If you do end up applying for this, Look for colleges that aren't as competitive and, and choose ones which are less competitive because you're, all the other colleges are most likely to be taken from undergraduates or people who've already been to Cambridge and then carry on doing uh, a, a something in Cambridge. So look for ones that are less competitive and then you can actually probably choose which one you have instead of putting your top two choices as competitive colleges, which is what I did, and then not getting either of them and then just getting randomly chosen in the college. So that's worth thinking about. So the final part of this video is how I boosted my CV in order to get to the position where they were able to offer me a place and consider me fit into you. Now this is involves kind of a lot of grafting and lots of work uh, in second year and first year. So you get as, on as many committees as you can for your in area of interest. Um, if you do any research projects that are in first and second year, try and present those at a conference or make a poster or do something like that to just to show that you're interested in your specific field. It doesn't have to be a specific project to whatever you're doing. So I did mine in paediatric cardiac surgery, um, one of my project uh, posters. But that doesn't really matter because it's still showing that you've got an interest in the area that you're doing. You can do research projects and you can do conferences and things like that. So definitely go along to those. Go along to conferences. Um, do poster presentations, oral presentations if you can. Try and get on committees. I didn't really get on too many committees, but it does still look good and it shows you have an interest from, from early on. So from first and second year, I'll try and do those things. Um, really focus in second year if you want to, because that's the year you'll be applying. So from the start of second year, try and get as many extra opportunities that you can. Find as many consultants or any research things or audits or anything like that that you can, just to show that you're doing something. Um, let's say if you have, a, I did a GP placement, I did a research project within the GP, uh, and then I was able to then present that. So it's kind of finding, finding options that you can do with those and they will really help your application and your CV. So that was a really quick introduction. I'll probably make another video alongside this uh, to, to, to support this if you have any questions. If you do have any questions, put them in the comments below. I do realise that no one's really done one of these videos before because I haven't seen it on YouTube. 
but this might be the first of its kind. So any questions, hit it up below. I'll probably do another video preparing a bit more information, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you again.